So let's go. My name is Dr. Mark Allendary. I'm the Medical Director of Infectious Diseases and Chief Innovation Officer for Access Health Louisiana. I do live in New Orleans, Louisiana. I serve as co-chair for the ACOI Infectious Diseases Subspecialty Section. You see me do these updates for over a year in conjunction with the leadership of the ACOI. Thank you, ACOI, for letting me do this. I hope these messages are getting to you uh, and uh, being able to keep up with the latest on COVID-19. I know many of you are in the thick of the fight. I'd like to thank all of you on behalf of us who are focusing daily on infectious diseases, and certainly on behalf of the ACOI. Thank you, ACOI. All right. Oh, also on behalf of the ACOI, I need to ask you, are you registered for the ACOI virtual spring meetings? It's not too late. There are three meetings coming up. I'm talking at them. Uh, from May 11th to the 15th that are focusing on three important areas and all with an opportunity to earn much needed CME. So check them out on the ACOI website and moving forward together with the ACOI, thank you. We will continue to share information as it becomes available as well as some hopeful progress that we are seeing. So onto the stories, herd immunity is not going to happen. Uh, this is a devastating story that appeared in the New York Times on Monday, I'm sure you all saw it. Certain phrases that have become common vernacular uh, as the COVID-19 pandemic has persisted over the past year, one of those phrases was herd immunity. Now, it was the idea that sometime soon in the future, we would reach a point where the virus no longer had a leg up on us, that too many of us would be immune and it wouldn't have its grip on our way of life. That concept now sadly has changed. Her immunity was based on how many of us in the U.S. and throughout the world became vaccinated, how the virus evolved and mutated, and the speed by which vaccine supply became available to the world. All of those things were in a race with each other, and as we roll into the summer, just weeks away now, we are starting to get a clear picture as to where all of that is. And the sad news is, is that we now know that herd immunity is not within reach, so we need to focus on controlling the threat. And how do we do that? Vaccinations, baby, vaccinations. Now, the herd immunity threshold that we now need to reach is about 80% according to experts. Previously, it was estimated to be about 60 to 70% of the population. So why the increase to 80% now? Because the initial calculations were based on the contagiousness of the original version of the virus. Now the prominent variant that's circulating in the US is the B117 that was first identified in Britain and it's much, much more transmissible. Now the variant from India has reached many states in the US, including Iowa, California, Tennessee, and it's complicating the herd immunity scenario even further. In fact, on May 4th, the US finally restricted travel to India because of this. So other reasons for giving up on herd immunity, amongst other factors, are that not everyone is getting the vaccine. What? Current polls indicate that 30% of vaccine hesitancy in the US, meaning those people, um, are not intending to get vaccinated. The hesitancy is actually the main reason we are not likely to reach herd immunity. Concurrently, as travel restrictions are lifted, variants will make their way to the U.S. Another reason that vaccine rates uh, need to go up. Now, uh, why are variants running rampant, you ask? Well, consider that less than 2% of those in India and less than 1% of those living on the African continent have been vaccinated. So the next best hope is that the rate of hospitalizations and deaths are reduced. And if we can do that, we can protect people who are most at risk for severe illness. And that will mean that COVID can go from being a giant disruption of our society to more of a normal everyday infection, something like the common cold. Now, the, the way to demote COVID to status of the common cold is through vaccinations. Vaccinations, baby. Right, And it seems like I'm saying the message, same message over and over again, but that's what our patients need to hear. We can't stop saying it. Get vaccinated. Hashtag vaccinated. So how do we overcome vaccine hesitancy that we are seeing? First and foremost, we must encourage our patients to stop listening to media that promote untruths. Boo, right? Ugh. The same is true for social media. Also, we need to recognize that people respond better to those within their own social circle. And this is the real important point. They need to see that their friends and family are getting vaccinated. 
and it makes them want to join that club. And it doesn't matter what our public leaders or celebrities are saying. That's not what people are uh, being influenced by. It's their neighbor who says they will hang out with them again if they get vaccinated. That can make the biggest impact. Hygiene. Interestingly, San Francisco officials are also saying that their cases are decreasing dramatically and they may be close to herd immunity. Think about that. Get this. Over the past week, San Francisco has recorded an average of 26 new COVID-19 cases in a day. Two-thirds of all adults living in that city have been vaccinated. It's one of the highest rates in the U.S. And as a result, listen to this. Live theater productions are on their way back and the city's relaxing many of their precautions. So these are the stories that need to be told, San Francisco's success story and others that have problems with high rates of vaccination. The moral of this story is that we can get back to normal if everyone gets a vaccine. And let me just say this, that misinformation has a, uh, uh, an r naught. that's a word that we can use now because everybody understands what an r naught is. I refer to misinformation having an r naught of six. In other words, it travels six times faster than actual information just because it's so clickety clickbait uh, and misinformation has been a huge problem uh, with uh, COVID-19. In fact, this is one of the reasons that we started this video blog. Okay, so let me take a deep breath. Whew. Now our next story is going to talk about what's happening in India. So the COVID-19 crisis in India is reaching devastating proportions. This isn't an there isn't enough production of vaccine to keep up with the demand. Yet, ironically, India is the world's biggest vaccine maker. Its two current vaccine producers will take two months or more to boost monthly output to more than 110 million doses from 70 million to 80 million. But in that population of 1.4 billion people, you can see how hard it is to keep pace. And unbelievably, the president of India, President Modi, had encouraged gatherings for religious festivals and political rallies. Those super spreader events are a huge part of the problem. Plus, the government has not imposed any emergency lockdowns. In fact, school teachers were ordered to oversee voting stations, and consequently, many who did caught the virus, and about 700 of those individuals died of COVID-19. Peace and love to you and your family. The crisis in India can best be understood when thinking about the sheer numbers. The ashes of bodies are overwhelming crematoriums. There is no more space in many of them to keep inside lockers. Plus, there is an emergency shortage of oxygen too. And it's being reported that people are dying in line just to refill oxygen tanks. <sighs> and hospitals are turning away even the most critically ill. And that's because with those hospitals, there aren't enough beds, doctors, nurses, ventilators, oxygen, or even medicines. With many cases and deaths going unreported, the true toll that COVID-19 is taking in the country is believed to be up to 10 times higher than reflected in the official figures, which are already harrowing with a death toll of over 200,000 and more than 20 million infections confirmed. In India, it's killing people at a rate of 120 people per hour. And although the U.S. is sending aid, much of it has been discovered sitting around in a ground, uh, on the ground in an airplane hangars once airlines have landed, not reaching their destinations for up to a week. Clearly, logistics are playing a part of this perfect COVID-19 storm in India. And speaking of India, I want to exclaim my gratitude to Dr. Rohanda Kapila, who passed away on April 28th after a three-week battle with COVID-19. In the medical community and in infectious diseases, he was known as a giant who contributed so much to the field and was known throughout the world for his accomplishments. He died in New Jersey after he went to India to help his family through the health crisis. And uh, although vaccinated, he did uh, catch the virus and he was 81 years old. And again, much props, much love uh, and peace uh, to, your, to your family. All right, so let's end with some good news. Uh, good neighbor vaccine incentives in Detroit. Here in New Orleans, we were doing a shot for a shot. You'd show up, we'd give you a shot, you'd get a shot. That's New Orleans, that's the way we roll here. But shout out to Detroit Mayor Mike Dugan, whose goal is to make Detroit the easiest place in America to get a vaccine. I love that goal. How awesome is that? 
So he created an incentive program that pays individuals for helping fellow Detroiters get their vaccine. Those who drove someone to get a vaccine will receive $50 on a prepaid debit card to reward their efforts. Drivers can bring up to three passengers in one car and get paid for all three. However, after $600 in payments, the, you know, the city will need to tax that money, so you'll get a W-9. But anyway, we can, don't worry about that. All right. Also, the city offers $2 rides to vaccination sites for residents, but the new good neighbor incentive proves to be more cost effective and efficient for the city. Way to go, Detroit. I know that West Virginia is doing a program like this as well, where I think uh, for younger individuals, they are uh, uh, creating $100 bonds uh, as well uh, to encourage younger people, uh, and they'll get a $100 bond. I think that's awesome, uh, and I'm loving all of these super innovative ways that we are trying to get folks vaccinated. So in the future, please continue to stay on, on the lookout for these regular updates and to read more from the sources used in this report, go to the ACOI.org forward slash COVID-19. Together with the ACOI, we'll help you have the latest information to help you respond to your patients and stay on top of the crisis. As always, feel free to reach out directly to me, M.A. Derry at Mac.com. I love hearing from you. Please stay safe. We can do this together.